It's a multinational of a particular kind, one you all know. Some of you may even visit it. It's present across the globe and on the corner of your street. The Catholic Church. With its hierarchy, its communication, and its very darkest secret, pedophilia. In Australia, 7% of priests are thought to have sexually abused minors, 4% in the United States. We discovered that clergymen found guilty of pedophilia are still active, often in contact with children. Thanks to internal documents, we'll reveal how church leaders protect priests accused of sexually abusing minors by sending them from country to country, notably in Africa. Our investigation into these international exiles took us to Cameroon, to Argentina, to the United States, to France and to Italy. During our travels, we established this unprecedented map, that regarding the transfers of priests involved in cases of pedophilia. Il y a quand même cette idée que quelqu'un qui a été un prédateur pour des enfants, ben finalement s'il va en Afrique ou s'il va en Amérique latine, c'est pas bien grave, c'est criminel. And the victims number tens of thousands, marked with scars for the rest of their lives. Our investigations would lead us all the way to Pope Francis. We'll reveal how, when he was Archbishop of Buenos Aires, he tried to influence the Argentine Justice Department. Su santidad, I intend to influence the justice in Argentina in the case of Grassi. We investigated the mysteries of the church where, on the altar of truth, God's law seems to prevail over that of men. Our inquiry into the international transfers of priests accused of pedophilia begins in the United States. We're in Chicago, in the shadow of this cathedral, to witness a very unique kind of protest. Expose the truth. Protect the children. Expose the truth. Protect the children. Expose the truth. All are victims of pedophile priests. In their hands, portraits of them as children when they were abused. In the U.S., 16,000 people have already lodged complaints for sexual abuse against Catholic priests. These victims have joined forces for the annual conference of their support group, SNAP, Survivor Network of Those Abused by Priests. Hello, everybody. It's great to see you again. And I think it looks like we've got a bigger group than last year, which is even better news. So how many of you are here for the first time? Ooh. That looks like 40%. Remember that all of us here are survivors of sexual assaults and betrayals during our youth. So if you're looking for an opportunity to share your experience with people who truly get it, this is the place. Recently, the organization has seen abuse victims from all over the world join its ranks. It has become the international of those abused by the church. Me llamo Miguel, tengo 34 años y soy un superviviente de abusos sexuales por parte de sacerdotes de Barcelona, España. Eh, cuando tenía 16 años fui abusado por el sacerdote católico responsable del grupo de jóvenes al que acudía. Where are you from? Santiago, Chile. Chile. Eh? I'm from Germany, from Berlin. Okay. I was sexually abused in Mexico when I was 14 years old. I'm actually from the Philippines. Okay. I was abused by a just Okay. For three, three years. I was 15 years old. I was abused as a, a teen um, for a long period of time. It was with an oblate priest. His name was Jack McCann in um, Vancouver, Canada. Accounts from over 50 countries. 
At the end of the conference, we talked to one of the activists, Anne Barrett Doyle. Thanks to reports from victims, SNAP is the only group to have been able to establish a list of priests worldwide allegedly involved in pedophilia cases. We only include those priests who have been accused of child sexual abuse in a credible public document. It has to be either a court document that's publicly accessible or a mainstream news outlet. She began her work 14 years ago. In the States, these activists publish the names and photos of accused priests on the Internet to try to ensure they never come into contact with children again. This is just the letter A, and it just keeps going. Uh, um, how many names at the end so far? So, so uh, all in, in the entire database, we have 4,400 names. So do you have any French names in the, in the list? We do have several. Um, so Father Rivoire is a very troubling case because he abused this young boy, and, uh, and, and, and Marius uh, Inuit boy did report the abuse eventually within statute. And, and, uh, but Rivois was fled he, in 1993. It somehow spirited him back to France, where he lives safely now. Um, that's not the case of his victim, who took his own life uh, in December of 2012. To avoid justice, one French priest accused of the sexual abuse of minors is thought to have fled Canada and be hiding in France. The story barely seems credible. We contacted the sister of one of the priest's presumed victims. Terezi Tungalik speaks to us from northern Canada, deep in Inuit territory. Her brother Marius Tungalik committed suicide five years ago. He had filed a complaint against the French priest. She has sent us some old photos of her and her kid brother and one of Father Rivoire. How old will be Marius today? He would be 58 today. 58? Oh, um, yeah. Do you think the the uh what happened to, to him when he was a child was responsible about why he decided to, to die. Of course. Of course. My message never left him. Even though he became an adult, he could not sleep in the dark. He was still afraid. Do you think Marius was the only victim of Mr. Revoir? No. I, I, I know some more people. He has ruined so many people's lives. This man doesn't deserve to be free. If we can get reward behind bars in um, Canadian soil, it will be a message to the other priests who think they might be, get away with things like this. We get our hands on the warrant issued to the Canadian police for Father Rivoire's arrest. They've been after the priest since 1998. On it, we discover the name of Marius, but also two other boys, made anonymous by the police with black lines. A girl of 14 is also among the alleged victims. In all, the priest is thought to have abused four children. Finally, in the top left-hand corner, a vital piece of information. The name of the town where the priest is believed to be hiding, Gou, in France. A small town in the Vaucluse where there's a monastery belonging to his community. So we catch the train to Strasbourg. That's right, because in the meantime, we've got hold of some internal documents from his community. Father Rivoir has been transferred several times. After Ariat in Canada, he didn't stay in Gou, as presumed by the Canadian police. He apparently went next to Turin, near Lyon, and that's where we lost track of him. But after several months of inquiries, during a phone call, a priest from a priory where Father Revoir had stayed unwittingly gave us a new lead. Il est dans la communauté des pères à Strasbourg. Mais il était chez vous jusqu'il n'y a pas longtemps, non Ben oui, il y a, il y a, il y a un an, il était là. C'est juste ici. The priest, wanted by the Canadian police for 19 years for sexually abusing four children, seemingly lives here, in Strasbourg, among his religious community. 
From now on, we'll film with a hidden camera. Our information was correct. The priest is here, at the end of the corridor. Bonjour, Monsieur Ivoire. Bonjour. Mathieu, Martin, enchanté. Vous prendre une minute ou pas On peut s'asseoir Oui, c'est l'heure de dégager. On est journaliste et on vient vous voir parce qu'en fait, on a des personnes sur place dans, les, dans ces territoires du Nord-Ouest, dans l'ONU à Voûte. Vous n'êtes pas censé savoir qu'il y a plusieurs enfants qui ont parlé de vous, notamment de, de faits d'agression sexuelle. Euh, et donc nous, on voulait avoir votre, voilà, votre vérité là-dessus parce que c'est important aussi d'avoir la vérité de ceux dont, dont on parle. Vous ne voulez pas nous dire non. même pas une, un non. petit mot Est-ce que, est que le nom de Marius Tungalik, ça vous dit quelque chose Je crois, oui, je me suis appelé dans quel village c'était, mais... C'était ce jeune homme Est-ce que ça vous dit quelque chose <rire> We show him the photo of the young Inuit, Marius Tungalik. Pour moi, ils sont tous ça. Ah oui euh, Et donc, donc ce jeune homme-là, enfin ce monsieur, il s'est suicidé à 55 ans Vous ne saviez pas Il s'est suicidé et dans, une, dans, une de, dans plusieurs de ses mails, il, il parle de la question sexuelle qu'il a subie et, et il donne votre nom. Il dit que c'était vous, celui qui a fait ces agressions. Regardez, ça c'est vous. C'est le, 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 le malade d'arrêt. Vous savez que vous êtes sous le condamné d'un arrêt, d'un malade d'arrêt canadien Non. Est-ce que vous êtes signalé aux autorités françaises Je n'en sais rien. Est-ce que vous-même, est-ce que vous avez fait la démarche J'arrête là. Je vais vous poser une question très simple, c'est est-ce que euh, vous avez déjà agressé sexuellement les enfants Je ne vous réponds pas. Mais, mais pourquoi Parce que vous n'êtes pas mon confesseur. Ah, vous savez, monsieur, la vérité vous rendra libre. Vous connaissez cette phrase de la Bible Oui, oui, j'ai trouvé. How can a priest accused of the sexual abuse of minors change countries and homes and stay out of the clutches of the police and justice for almost 20 years And is it an isolated case? One man may have an explanation. Back in the United States, we've arranged to meet a former American priest, Patrick Wall. Since the 1990s, he has been a close-up witness of pedophile scandal. Joined the monastery as a very idealistic 20-year-old and thought I was going to be a monk a priest, and unfortunately it didn't work out that way because so many sex abuse cases came forward that I ended up actually being ordained early to go work on and follow sex abusers who were being withdrawn. And at that point, uh, at the age of 32, I had to make a moral decision. Am I going to support this institution? You know, am I part of this? Or do I have to find a different path? And that's when I chose to take a, take a different path and to help survivors. What do you think of the Since then, Patrick Wall has become a whistleblower, an expert called on to testify in over 2,000 cases of priests accused of sexual abuse. According to him, the Catholic Church has developed a system to exfiltrate pedophile priests. That's the same pattern we've seen in Australia. It's the same pattern we've seen in the United States. It's the same pattern we've seen in Canada. It's the same pattern in Ireland, in England, in Italy. It's, it's honestly, it's in the DNA of the Roman Catholic system. And I like to call this the geographic solution. So what the bishop needs to do then, he finds out that the priest is, is a perpetrator. And then at that point, he simply moves him to a different spot where the previous scandal is not known. And if it's not enough? You move him outside the country. That's, that's the geographic solution. You, you can move him from continent to continent as long as he can speak the language that is needed. It looks legitimate. And so he's going to be accepted without question. That's where the danger comes in. An anonymous source would provide us with proof of the geographical solution described by Patrick Wall. One evening, we received dozens of internal documents from the community of St. John. 
500 brothers present throughout the world. This French community is highly controversial. It has the highest number of priests found guilty of pedophilia in recent years, three since 2012. And there are thought to have been more cases of sexual abuse. It's all there in black and white. As we turn the pages, we get a strange feeling. The community seems to have become a master in the art of the international displacement of priests suspected of sexually abusing children. Among the pile of documents from the community of St. John, one recent letter draws our attention and sends us rushing to the airport. Here's the letter, signed by a high-ranking church official, this Archbishop from Cameroon. He wrote to the head of the community of St. John, having decided to exclude from the diocese several St. John priests. He explained himself. Reverend brother, some brothers of St. John got themselves into situations of extreme gravity. The brothers in question were about to be hauled in front of the courts at a risk of dirtying the image of our church. I used all my weight to make sure this did not happen. What had these French priests done to incur the wrath of an archbishop? In Cameroon, a mostly Catholic country, the community of St. John is an institution. The brothers run one of the biggest high schools in Yaoundé, the capital. But in Bertua, in the east of the country, the brothers of St. John have left town. Until 2014, they oversaw this cathedral, the biggest in the region. We go to see the archbishop, the one who asked the St. John priest to leave. Monsignor Atanga, one of the African representatives of the Vatican. Okay. Interview de Monsignor Atanga. I wanted to show you a letter. It's you who had addressed the Prior General, Thomas Joachim, and you said in it that you were talking about brothers in saying that certain brothers were put in a situation of extreme gravity and that the brothers put in cause were on the point of being thrown in front of the tribunals at the risk of the last image of our church. Oui. J'ai pesé de tout mon poids pour qu'on n'en arrive pas là. Est-ce que vous avez essayé de cacher les faits pour pas que l'église soit ternie, que l'image de l'église soit ternie Non, moi je ne cache jamais les faits. Vous n'avez rien caché Moi je ne cache rien. Mais ça veut dire quoi quand vous dites vous, euh, ils étaient sur le point d'être traînés devant les tribunaux Je ne voudrais pas commenter, je ne voudrais pas commenter cette lettre. Donc là maintenant qu'on en... cette lettre ne devrait pas euh, être là. Être là. We try to dig deeper, but. No, 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 je ne commente pas la lettre. Je ne dis rien, je ne dis rien là-dessus. No, 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 je ne commente pas. C'est pour ça que je dis que je ne commente pas. Tu m'excuses, mais c'est comme ça. Donc là, pas de commentaire. Aucun commentaire. <rire> bon, d'accord. Vous ne devrez même pas avoir cette lettre. Je ne devrais pas avoir cette lettre. Cette lettre vient de cette lettre confidentielle, donc. Merci à vous. Yes, thanks for your precious comments, Your Grace, but they weren't exactly helpful. At the Cathedral of Batua we'll discover the reasons why the St. John brothers hurriedly left town. Another alleged case of pedophilia. The sexual abuse of a number of boys. For three days, we try to find these presumed victims. In this city, where the Catholic Church is omnipresent, it's hard to broach the subject. Finally, we find one of the kids who was supposedly abused by the priest. Today, he's 15. What age was you at that moment? At that moment, I was 12 years old. I was a man who was a man who was a priest in the world. I was a man who 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 was a man. We show him one of the community's internal documents that we managed to procure, 
the mugshots of all the St. John brothers across the globe, 508 in all. Mm. This priest had indeed been posted in Pertua. After a few weeks, the boy finally admitted everything to his parents. They immediately went together to the Batua law courts to file a complaint. But here, nobody touches the church. Moi-même personnellement, j'ai vu le procureur de la République. On a passé plus d'une heure. Il a appelé même son substitut. Son substitut est venu. Il a répété la même chose. Les prêtres ne sont pas justifiables. Ça veut dire, en l'occurrence, qu'on ne peut pas poursuivre les prêtres. Oui, on ne peut pas poursuivre les prêtres. C'est comme ça qu'ils ont dit que bon, c'est porté euh, plainte contre l'Église catholique. In Bertua, the justice of men seems to serve men of God. We have an appointment with a civil servant inside the Ministry of Justice. We film discreetly. She confirms the closeness between the church and one of the top judges. Donc quand l'affaire explose, la magistrate du tribunal a tout fait pour agir discrètement. Discrètement pas l'église. Sur les dossiers très délicats, surtout avec une expatriée. On a caché, 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 caché. C'est passé comme ça, il a fait ça. Ça m'a fait mal, non Ça m'a fait mal, mais comme monsieur, il me suit rien dans le maillon. Mm. Ma voix ne voit pas compter. The civil servant gives us an excerpt from the victim's testimony. The name of Father Emmanuel appears nowhere. Instead, he's merely designated as le prêtre, the priest. En tout cas, le nom du prêtre n'apparaît pas dans l'enquête, quoi. Le nom du prêtre, on n'a pas dit, mais moi je le connais. Le prêtre, c'était Emmanuel. Le prêtre n'a jamais été poursuivi. On l'a même pas inquiété. Before leaving Bertua, we meet another presumed victim. He too picks out Father Emmanuel from the mugshots. Where is Father Emmanuel now, the French priest accused of sexually abusing at least two boys? Among the community's internal documents are the postings made in 2016. Since being expelled from Bertua in Cameroon, Father Emmanuel appears to be in Bologna in Italy. We wait for the father outside the priory. After a few hours, he finally shows up. We film discreetly. Père Emmanuel, bonjour. Excusez-moi de vous déranger, Martin, Mathias. On vient vous voir par rapport à Bertois en Afrique. On voulait savoir pourquoi vous étiez parti. On est journaliste. On travaille pour la télévision française, France 2. Qui avez-vous rencontré là-bas Un jeune garçon, pour être très précis, euh, qui, euh, qui euh, vous reconnaît sur, parmi toutes les photos des frères Saint-Jean comme étant son agresseur euh, pour, pour viol. Je voulais savoir ce que vous en pensiez. Est-ce que c'est effectivement le cas Est-ce que vous reconnaissez ces faits-là ou pas Non, c'est complètement faux. C'est une histoire qui a été inventée par l'évêque. Par l'évêque sur place Oui. D'accord. Pour, pour, dans quel but Donc il a demandé aux jeunes gens de mentir. Euh... Il s'en est servi. Il s'en est servi. Il nous a fait chanter avec ça. Donc c'est un complot. C est, c est, il s'est servi de ça pour. Mm. Comment expliquer cette lettre Alors du frère de, de, de l'archidiocèse de, de Bertois, donc de Atanga, Joseph Atanga, le fameux archevêque, 
Les frères mis en cause étaient sur le point d'être traînés devant les tribunaux au risque de ternir l'image de nos faillis. Sur le point. Oui. J'ai pesé de tout mon poids pour qu'on n'en arrive pas là. Comment cet archevêque, d'un côté, vous accuserait et de l'autre, pèserait de tout son poids sur la justice locale pour pas que vous soyez suivi Je fais croire. C'est assez subtil. Very subtle indeed. Children are manipulated by the archbishop. But Father Emmanuel offers another explanation. Comment vous expliquez que deux jeunes gens qui ne se, qui ne sont, enfin, en tout cas, qui ne se connaissent pas, qui ne se fréquentent pas, vous reconnaissent sur plus de 500 photos de, de prêtres de la communauté Saint-Jean en disant que c'est ce monsieur-là qui nous a agressés sexuellement Pourquoi est-ce que deux C'est difficile à dire parce qu'ils sont tous les deux un peu simplets. Je trouve que c'est quelque chose de juteux. Il y en aura peut-être malheureusement d'autres. Ils cherchent de l'argent. Est-ce que vous avez été inquiété par la justice française ou la police française Est-ce que vous faites l'objet d'un procès canonique ou pas du tout Non. Il n'y a aucune... Il n'y a rien, en fait, c'est rien passé. Il rien passé. According to Father Emmanuel, nothing happened. But why then was he shipped out of Cameroon when he could have been posted to another diocese in the country In Boulogne, his new superior explains. He doesn't know we're filming. So the community of St. John shipped Father Emmanuel off to Bologna so he wouldn't be anywhere near any kids. But when we leave the priory, two posters catch our eye. Teatro San Salvatore and Teatro, a theater inside the Priory. It's then that the penny drops. Quand il nous dit qu'il n'est pas du tout en lien avec des enfants, peut-être pas dans l'église, mais à la même adresse, au même prioré, dans les mêmes couloirs, il y a des enfants qui passent. After all this toing and froing in the world of St. John, we had a few questions for the head of the community. On the case in Bertua and Cameroon, but also on the other documents in our hands. The St. John Public Relations Director emailed us. Dear Sir, we are prudent about the televised press, especially when sensitive subjects are concerned. After long reflection, we prefer to decline your request for an interview. Regarding the departure of the brothers from the cathedral in Bertua, we had every reason to believe that these rumors were ungrounded, the same conclusion that the local police and justice obviously reached because they pressed no charges after their investigation. I send you cordial greetings and my prayers. Not exactly a satisfactory reply. So we check up on the schedule of the head of the community of St. John. He's due to fly to Addis Ababa in Ethiopia today from the Charles de Gaulle airport outside Paris. We wait for brother Thomas Joachim with a sign to grab his attention. And it works. Frère Thomas, Martin Boudot, journaliste de France 2, Cache Investigation. Ah d'accord, d'accord, d'accord. Oui, ça va, ça bon, va. Je me permets de, de venir vous voir parce qu'on a essayé de vous interviewer, mais j'arrive pas à avoir une interview avec vous. Oui, Alors, je suis mais dans un coin. On, donc, on, on vous a écrit. Oui, mais vous m'avez écrit, mais, mais vous savez qu'on fait de la télévision, donc ça nous arrange d'avoir une interview. Puis en plus, on a vraiment plein de choses sur lesquelles on aimerait vous interviewer. Oui, oui. Euh, je ne sais pas si on peut prendre quelques minutes ensemble. Non, 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 je vous ai écrit pour vous expliquer pourquoi je ne ferai pas d'interview comme ça. D'accord. C'est important qu'on ait des réponses à la télévision. Pourquoi on vous les a données par écrit D'accord, mais... Vous les a données les réponses par écrit, donc 
pense que c'est suffisant. Puis on vous a expliqué pourquoi on ne voulait pas faire une interview comme ça. Et pourquoi vous ne voulez pas faire une interview comme ça alors Je voulais expliquer déjà. Non mais dites-moi, ça m'intéresse. Non, non, mais je voulais expliquer bon, par les... Moi, moi j'aimerais vous, vous, vous poser des questions sur, le, sur la question des, des, des abus sexuels sur mineurs de, de la part de, de membres de la communauté Saint-Jean. Oui, oui. Il y a des accusations concernant euh, euh, certains de vos membres au Cameroun, à Bertois. J'ai des documents ici qui, qui l'attestent. Vous en avez euh, également d'autres sur lesquels j'aimerais aussi avoir votre opinion. Euh, notamment, une, notamment des, euh, voilà, c'est un des documents hein, de chez vous euh, qui parle d'un du, frère euh, qui euh, dit qu'il y a eu des, des contacts non convenables avec des filles, euh, des personnes ont été bouleversées dans leur foi. Ici, c'est un autre frère euh, qui dit qu'il n'y a pas de suivi dans les, de jeunes euh, dans ces camps. Voilà, moi, ça me paraît important de, de connaître vos réponses là-dessus. Donc, est-ce est qu'on pourrait avoir une interview sur le long terme avec vous Non, je vous ai expliqué déjà par oui. lettre pourquoi. Mais euh, ici, on a un de vos, vos frères qui parle d'abus sexuels. Est-ce que pour chacun de ces cas-là, vous avez transmis les signalements à la justice Despite our frequent requests, the community of St. John refused to grant us an interview. During our investigation, we discovered other examples of the international transfer of priests accused of pedophilia. We could have chosen to tell you about this priest from Lyon, who after being accused of sexual abuse by one young teenager, was moved to Guinea. Or this one, with an international arrest warrant for sexually abusing children in France hanging over his head, now in refuge in Lebanon. Or this one, an Italian, wanted for sexually abusing eight boys, transferred to Mozambique. At the heart of the Catholic Church, how many cases are there of priests moved from country to country due to suspicions of sexual abuse on minors? We try to add them up. Over three months, we contacted the main victims groups around the world. Each gave us their list of transferred priests. Then we called whistleblowers, attorneys, judges, and all cross-checked with local newspaper articles. We only took into account priests moved since 1990. There were so many cases, we had to see this on the big screen. So we booked the biggest panoramic movie theater in Paris. We compiled all of the data onto a map. To discover it with us is Father Julin. Bonjour, Frère Julin. Bonjour, Madame. Merci vraiment d'être ici. Merci à vous. A French clergyman with a unique profile. He's both a priest and a therapist. He sees sexual abuse victims, but also the priests accused of it. That's right. And he's the only French man of the cloth to accept our invitation. En fait, notre équipe a collecté les cas de prêtres ou de religieux de l'Église catholique qui ont été déplacés. Vous voyez les flèches qui commencent à se mettre en place sur la carte. Déplacés, ça veut dire mutés à cause d'affaires de pédophilie. Je vous laisse regarder. Est-ce que vous vous attendiez à autant de mouvements sur cette carte et donc à autant de prêtres déplacés ou mutés en raison d'affaires de pédophilie um... Autant de déplacements et de, de prêtres mutés, euh, non, pas, pas, pas de cette... Euh, ça me semblait être quelque chose d'un autre âge, hein, qui se faisait il y a, euh, il y a un siècle, mais qu'on avait un peu euh, laissé courir. Euh, mais ça n'a pas l'air d'être du tout le cas. Non, pas du tout le cas. Depuis 1990, on a comptabilisé 95 mutations, entre guillemets, de prêtres impliqués dans des affaires de pédophilie. Et encore, on est très loin d'avoir accès à toutes les données. En tout, ils auraient abusé de 802 victimes. Mmh. Donc ce chiffre-là est important aussi, très oui, important. Oui, tout à fait. fait. C'est 802 victimes qui auraient pu être évitées. 
on a le sentiment euh, d'avoir affaire à un système d'exfiltration de prêtres pédophiles ou soupçonnés de l'être. Il y a une dynamique qui est celle de déplacer au loin. Mais là, on, on, on est carrément dans d'autres pays, dans d'autres continents. Et euh, il y a quand même cette notion, si ces personnes ont été reconnues comme étant des pédophiles ou étant des auteurs d'abus sexuels dans les pays où, où, ils, où ils sont originaires, euh, les, les envoyer à l'étranger, c'est euh, complètement irresponsable, c'est criminel. Alors, on va parler de cas très précis qu'on a découvert euh, au cours de cette enquête. Le cas du père Nicolas, on va le découvrir ensemble, accusé de viol sur des enfants sourds dans les années 80 en Italie. Il n'a jamais été jugé, mais il a été transféré en Argentine, où il a été arrêté récemment pour des faits absolument similaires, cette fois, c'était à Mendoza. C'est irresponsable. Ils sont au courant de, 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 de ce problème-là. Et c'est certainement pas euh, en le remettant dans un cadre où il va pouvoir re, re, refaire les mêmes crimes qu'il a commis en Italie. Qu'aurait dû faire l'Église Il y a pouvoir dans le droit canonique de faire quelque chose, de faire que cet homme-là soit retiré de, de la prêtrise. Vous faites partie des Pères Blancs, euh, les missionnaires d'Afrique. Euh, vous remarquerez que les prêtres soupçonnés de pédophilie euh, ont souvent été mutés, déplacés en Afrique, et vous l'avez dit aussi, en, en Amérique du Sud, des terres de mission. Et, et ça, j'imagine que quelque part, ça vous fait mal. Il euh, y a quand même cette idée que quelqu'un qui a été un prédateur pour des enfants, euh, ben, finalement, s'il va en Afrique ou s'il va en Amérique latine, c'est pas bien grave quoi, voilà. pour les enfants là-bas. On vous sent choqué Oui, oui, mais oui, mais oui. C'est plus acceptable aujourd'hui. C'est irresponsable, c'est immature, c'est tout ce qu'on veut. Et je crois qu'il y a quelque part aussi, chez beaucoup d'évêques ou autres, une telle déconnexion avec tout ce qui touche à la sexualité, à l'humain, à autre, qu'ils ne ils sont pas capables de ressentir ce que peut être la, la violence d'un abus sexuel sur un enfant. La personne que j'ai accompagnée, qui, qui, qui m'a confié le plus tardivement de choses, elle avait été abusée à l'âge de 7 ans, elle m'en a parlé à l'âge de 87 ans. Oh 80 ans plus tard, ça lui a pris pour pouvoir oser la parole sur ces faits-là. Parce que pour l'Église, la victime, c'est le fauteur de trouble. C'est le fauteur de trouble. C'est le scandale. C'est le parti le scandale. Arrive. Il y a une peur profonde du scandale. Et donc, euh, ces victimes sont des enfants de Dieu. C'est pas, c'est pas, c'est pas, pas des sous-enfants de, de Dieu. C'est pas sous enfants de Dieu. C'est pas une sous-catégorie. Euh, alors le pardon, ça serait bien pour. Euh, pour, pour ceux qui sont abusés, mais la miséricorde, pas pour les victimes. Et c'est quoi, ça, comme système C'est un système pervers. Et, 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 et c'est ce système-là qu'il faut changer. Quand je vous parlais de combat, c'est là que le combat il doit se mener. As you can imagine, after this interview, our attention turned to the Vatican, the Holy See, the place where the Church's laws are made, the place where punishments against pedophile priests are meted out. But we discovered that even inside the Vatican government, high-ranking officials have been accused of covering for priests accused of pedophilia. After several months of discussion, the Vatican chose this priest to answer our questions. Father Zollner, an advisor to the Pope on sexual abuse issues. He also sits on the Commission for the Protection of Minors, a body founded by Pope Francis two years ago. You have been appointed to this commission. What uh, has the commission done since then? And uh, do you think it's enough? We have people from all continents on this commission. We, we have experts from different fields, so psychology, psychiatry, uh, law, international law, social work, and theology. And we try to discuss what can be next steps to help the Pope. Yeah to set up new measures to be more incisive in okay. the life of um, local churches. Okay, and there is still a lot to do, no? Um, my expression for this is, this is a generational task. We will not finish within two years ah. or five years. Yeah. We will have to work long term, which yeah. means 15, 20, maybe 30 years. I wanted to show you something. These are the 10 cardinals that are usually considered are, are the most powerful of the Vatican. This is the, the C9, right? It's an advisory board. Yeah. Okay, and here, Gerhard Müller, prefect of the Congregation of the Doctrine and the Faith. Among these 10 cardinals, four are accused of having covered up pedophile priors. You know that, of course. Sure. What do you think of it? I have no, no particular knowledge about any of them. I, I, 
I you just know. said to me that you knew it. I know that there are allegations, but I don't know what, uh, what is the, the background of these cases. I am not an investigator. You, you, you want me to be more precise? Ah, sure. Okay, George Bell, so he's here in Australia a few months ago in front of the Australian Royal Commission on Sexual Abuses within the church. He recognized knowing uh, sexual abuses from Australian priests, but did not denounce them to justice. So what do you think of him being in the C9 with that story? I have uh, been to Australia last year. Yeah. I have traveled. Yeah. I have been in the diocese. I met with three survivors from the school where um, Cardinal Pell was at that time, the, the vice director of the school. And um, Cardinal Pell will engage to cooperate with justice and to cooperate uh, uh, in the sense of setting up safeguarding yeah. measures uh, sure, uh, in the same. Sure, but when you say he will, this is future. Yeah, sure. But he didn't denounce. Yeah, sexual abuse before and is in the C9. He admitted that. Is it shocking for you or not? Yeah, of course it is shocking, yeah. For him to be in the C9 and not having denouncing uh, sexual abuses on minors? Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, Francisco Erasuri is in Chile, here. Uh, documents have shown that Erasuri uh, has waited five years after the first victim spoke out to take action and to remove the priest, Father Karadima. Uh, and the fire, Father Karadima, has been since uh, proven guilty by the Vatican of sexual abuses. He's here, still in the C9. Yeah, I'm not responsible for the appointments no, in, the, in the C9. but what do you think of it? I'm not the one who decides on that. But what do you think? I think th they will stay as long as the Pope wants them there. Thank you very much. It seems then that only the Pope has the power to punish his cardinals. So why doesn't he take stronger action? Maybe because he too faced accusations in his homeland of Argentina long before his election. When he was Archbishop of Buenos Aires, he apparently tried to have a pedophile priest acquitted. To understand, we took one last flight. In our baggage, this book of interviews with the Pope. On page 64, the Pope tackles the question of pedophile priests. He writes, it never happened in my diocese. On the Holy Father's word, but is it the truth? Buenos Aires, along with God, or rather Diego Maradona, the Pope is a star. His face is everywhere. And yet, some refuse to share in this iconographic cult. In the city center, we have arranged to meet a group of victims. They were abused by priests in the Archdiocese of Buenos Aires. They alerted Pope Francis when he was their archbishop. Eh, Y, y, me, y me dolió mucho que, que Bergoglio no haga nada. Y, y todo, la, todo el mundo a mí me decía que le escriba porque él me iba a contestar. Y, y sufrí, sufrí, sufrí mucho. Y, y estoy muy decepcionada. Eso. As Archbishop of Buenos Aires, 
Pope Francis was seemingly deaf to the distress of these victims. But apparently it's worse. In another case concerning other victims, some believe he willfully tried to divert the course of justice. It's the Father Grassi case, the biggest pedophilia scandal in the Argentinian church. Julio Cesar Grassi was one of the best known priests in the country, very influential and often in the media spotlight. He ran a huge orphanage until some of the children there lodged a complaint against him for sexual abuse. In 2009, he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Still today, he's behind bars. But the Argentinian church did all in its power to have him acquitted. Juan Pablo Gallego represented Father Grassi's child victims. A trial spread over 15 years, and opposite him, the most renowned attorneys in the land, but also the Catholic Church. Sino que nos enteramos que en el año 2010 eh, aparecen unos libros eh, en dos tomos denominados Estudios sobre el caso Grassi, firmados por un jurista con un cierto reconocimiento y que ha sido profesor de la Universidad de Buenos Aires. Don't be fooled by the cover which makes you think it's a book. This 2,800-page counter-inquiry is a confidential, internal, Argentinian church legal text. Inside, the children are accused of falsifications, lies, deceit, and invention. Even their own sexual orientation is questioned. The conclusion is clear. The court's decision was wrong. Father Grassi had to be acquitted on appeal. One paragraph caught our eye. This work was commissioned in 2010 by the Argentine Episcopal Conference and notably by its then president, Cardinal Bergoglio, now Pope Francis. So the Pope did commission a counter inquiry to try to have a priest who had been sentenced for pedophilia acquitted. And it's said that Jose Bergoglio, the future pope, actually sent it to the judges, with a shrewd sense of timing before Father Grassi's various appeal hearings. One of the magistrates who received a copy of the counter-inquiry agreed to meet us. Carlos Maíquez, a former appeal court judge and former minister of justice, is today a high court judge. It's the first time he's spoken openly about the Grassi case. He remembers very well the day he found this counter-inquiry on his desk. En favor del Padre Grassi. Porque con esto se quiso ejercer una sutil presión sobre los jueces. Una manera de influenciar. Tú te fe, de acuerdo. Sí. Sutil. Me. Um... But finally useless. Father Grassi's sentence was upheld at both the Appeals Court and High Court. At the center of the counter-inquiry commissioned by the Pope when he was Archbishop of Buenos Aires is the account of a boy, an orphan, the main victim of Grassi. Since the case blew up in the early 2000s, it's the first time he's agreed to talk to a reporter. He wants to remain anonymous because he's still afraid of reprisals. <laughs> Hay esto, hay esta prueba. Me han allanado mi casa, me han roto la cerradura de mi casa. Se llevaron cosas, cosas personales, video cassette o cosas así que yo tenía que que era cosas que salía gratis. Lo que decidió la justicia era que para que yo tenga seguridad y brindarme seguridad que entre al programa de testigo protegido. ¿Qué, ¿Qué piensas de estos libros? Hay una sola cosa que le creo a Grassi, es esa, esa frase. Bergoglio nunca me soltó la mano. Y yo no lo escuché que si Francisco le sigue dando la mano o no, 
pero tampoco escuché lo contrario de la iglesia. Así que me quedo con la parte esa que le creo a Brasi que nunca le soltó la mano. The Pope has never publicly commented on the Grassi case. For eight months, we tried to get an interview with the Holy Father. Dozens of requests, all refused. So at the Vatican, we tried to meet His Holiness. He was to hold a public audience on St. Peter's Square. To get anywhere near him, you need to be up very early and to slip into the long line of the faithful. The doors open. Like at a concert, you have to sprint to the front to get the best places. Mission accomplished. We're in the front row. We split up. One part of the crew films from the Vatican Terrace. We want to give Pope Francis a letter with all our questions on his supposed role in the attempt to divert the course of justice in Argentina. Thousands of people have gathered. We'll need a miracle to get to talk to the Pope. A few hours later, the Pope Mobile arrives. The third time it passes, we shout. We managed to give him our letter. And then, a few minutes later, Sua Santidad, en el caso Gracia, intentando influir a la justicia argentina, Su Santidad, uh, en el caso Gracia, ha intentado influir la justicia argentina, ¿no? Porque ha pedido este estudio en el caso Gracia. Papá Kiko. Para nada. Despite our quick chat, neither Pope Francis nor any Vatican official has ever answered our letter. At the end of this investigation, there's one question. How can the Catholic Church retrieve itself from these guilty silences? Clergymen from a number of countries, such as Belgium, the United States, and the Netherlands, are mobilizing and launching national inquiry commissions on sexual abuse within the Church. All victims are listened to, and the spotlight has fallen on the responsibility of the bishops. So let us pray. May the Vatican order a worldwide inquiry commission so that past scars may be healed and we may still have faith in the future. <laughs>